Picture this, a colossal factory humming with American ingenuity, spitting out the backbone of modern air travel, the Boeing 737, at a mind-blowing pace. Nestled just outside Seattle in Renton, Washington, this powerhouse assembles up to 42 jets a month, transforming a bare metal shell into a sky-ready marvel in only nine days. It's a high-stakes ballet of lasers, wires, and wings that powers global journeys. Buckle up as we unpack this epic production line that's kept Boeing flying high for decades. Hey there, folks. Welcome to an inside look at one of America's greatest engineering feats, the Boeing Renton plant, where the iconic 737 jet comes to life. If you've ever flown on a short-haul trip across the country or zipped between cities for a business meeting, Chances are, you've been aboard one of these workhorses. The 737 isn't just any plane. It's the best-selling commercial jet in history, with over 12,000 delivered worldwide as of late 2025. And right here in the Pacific Northwest, Boeing's team turns out these birds in all their variations, from the efficient MAX models to specialized configs for airlines everywhere. But how do they pull it off at such a clip? We're talking 42 planes rolling off the line each month, a rate that's bounced back strong after some tough years. It's all about a finely tuned assembly process that's as precise as a surgeon's hand and as relentless as a Detroit auto line. Let's break it down step by step, like we're walking the factory floor together. And I'll throw in some real world comparisons to make it stick. First off, a quick rewind on the 737 story because context matters. Back in the mid-1960s, Boeing launched this single-aisle jet to compete in the growing market for shorter flights. It was designed to be reliable, fuel-efficient, and easy to maintain, qualities that made it a hit with airlines like Southwest and United. Fast forward through generations, the classics, the next generation, and now the Max series, which packs in advanced engines and tech for even better performance. By 2025, Boeing's cranked out more than 12 dollars 255 of these, with deliveries ramping up again after regulatory hurdles and production tweaks. The Renton facility, sprawling over a million square feet, is the heart of it all. It's not just a factory. It's a symbol of U.S. manufacturing muscle, employing thousands of skilled workers who blend cutting-edge automation with good old hands-on expertise. Think of it like Ford's Rouge plant back in the day. But for the skies, where efficiency isn't just a buzzword, it's survival in a competitive global market against rivals like Airbus. Now, every 737 starts its journey far from Washington State. The hollow fuselage, that big tube that forms the body's core, is crafted in Wichita, Kansas, at Spirit Aero Systems, a key supplier. Why Kansas? It's a nod to Boeing's roots and a hub for aviation know-how. These fuselages are built with lightweight aluminum alloys and composites to keep the plane nimble and fuel sipping. Once complete, they're loaded onto specially designed rail cars for a cross-country haul to Renton. Imagine a train chugging through the heartland, carrying the skeletons of future jets. It's like shipping giant Lego pieces that will one day carry hundreds of passengers. This supply chain is crucial. Any delay here ripples through the whole operation. In recent years, Boeing's focused on tightening this link, especially after quality issues spotlighted the need for seamless coordination. When that fuselage arrives at Renton, it's game on. The nine-day clock starts ticking as it's wheeled into the massive assembly hall. Days one through three are all about the guts, the hidden heroes that make the plane function. Picture building a custom home. You don't slap on the roof first. You lay the foundation with plumbing, wiring, and insulation. Same here. Engineers swarm the fuselage, installing miles of electrical cables. Think over 100 miles in a single plane, for everything from lights to avionics. These aren't your household wires. They're high-tech bundles resistant to extreme temperatures and vibrations. Plumbing comes next. Fuel lines, hydraulic systems for brakes and controls, and air ducts for cabin comfort. Insulation blankets are layered in to keep noise down and temperatures stable, because nobody wants a roaring, freezing flight. It's meticulous work, with teams using robotic arms for precision and human eyes for quality checks. Relate it to your car. 
Just like wiring a stereo system wrong could fry the whole thing, one misplaced cable here could ground a multi-million dollar jet. By the end of day three, the shells transformed from an empty can into a wired up framework, ready for the big additions. And safety? It's baked in. Every step includes inspections to catch issues early. A lesson reinforced after past incidents like the MAX groundings. Come day four, things get exciting. The tube officially becomes an airplane. This is when the wings attach, along with the vertical stabilizer. That tall fin at the tail that keeps the plane steady like a rudder on a boat. Workers use laser-guided systems for perfect alignment. We're talking tolerances tighter than a guitar string. Imagine trying to line up a 100-foot wing by eye. Impossible without tech. Lasers project beams and sensors confirm everything spot on, ensuring aerodynamic balance. This is also landing gear time. Those beefy wheels and struts that absorb the shock of touchdown. They're bolted on with hydraulic tools tested for fit. Why all this on day four? It's about sequencing. Get the major structures in place before cramming in more internals. It's like assembling a puzzle. Big pieces first. These wings, by the way, come from other suppliers, prepped with fuel tanks and control surfaces. The whole setup highlights Boeing's lean manufacturing philosophy, inspired by Toyota's methods, where parts arrive just in time to avoid clutter and waste. Day 5 shifts to the horizontal stabilizer, the flat tail pieces that help with pitch control, and kicks off functional testing. Engineers weave in more wiring for flight controls, those systems that let pilots bank and climb smoothly. Floorboards are finished, creating the base for the cabin. Then, interiors start taking shape. Galleys, that's airline speak for kitchens, and lavatories get installed. Think modular units like IKEA furniture but way more durable, complete with sinks, ovens and storage for in-flight meals. This stage is where the plane begins to feel passenger ready. Tests begin too. Basic checks on hydraulics and electrics. It's relatable to buying a new smartphone. You don't just turn it on. You test apps, charge it, ensure everything syncs. Here, early tests spot glitches before they're buried under more layers. With production at 42 a month, efficiency is key. Any rework eats time. So proactive checks keep the line moving. By day six, the magic happens. The plane comes alive. That flashing red beacon? It's the sign powers flowing through the systems for the first time. Now large-scale tests crank up. Does the landing gear retract and extend flawlessly? Better hope so because next time it'll be during takeoff on a real runway. Engineers simulate scenarios, pumping hydraulics and monitoring sensors. It's like a car's first startup after an engine swap. You rev it gently, listen for knocks. This electrification lets them verify avionics, the brain of the plane. Cabin pressure systems get a once over too. All this while the assembly line chugs along, the plane's on a moving platform, inching forward like a conveyor belt sushi bar, but with jets instead of rolls. Day seven, the plane stands on its own wheels for the first time, a milestone that feels almost ceremonial. Engines are hoisted and mounted on the wings, those powerful CFM International Leap Turbo fans on the max, sipping fuel like a hybrid car. Along with them come networks of wires, cables, and tubes for fuel, thrust reversers, and more. Throughout the build, systems are double and triple checked. It's not paranoia, it's aviation's zero tolerance for error. Compare it to heart surgery. Every connection must be perfect. Workers here are pros, many with decades of experience, union-backed, ensuring quality amid the push for speed. Day 8 ramps up the intensity with critical tests of flight control surfaces, flaps, slats, ailerons, and rudders. The cockpit, now called the flight deck in modern lingo, gets integrated. All components tested solo before must now harmonize. Pilot's controls link to actuators. Software runs diagnostics. It's like rehearsing a band. Individual instruments sound fine, but together they make music. Any discord? Back to tweaks. As the plane nears the line's end, tension builds. This is crunch time before handover. Finally, day nine, the customer walkthrough. Airline reps inspect every nook, from seats to seals, 
signing off before the jets towed out. It's birthed into the world, headed to Renton Field for engine runs, taxi tests, and that maiden flight. Ground crews fire up the turbines, check vibrations, and simulate emergencies. Then the first flight, a short hop to verify all systems under real conditions. Post-flight, any tweaks happen before delivery. This whole nine-day sprint, it's why Boeing dominates the narrow-body market fueling affordable travel that connects families and boosts economies. And yeah, in a nod to sustainability, even scraps from the line get recycled. Kind of like spotting a worker sorting through what looks like trash, but is actually salvaging valuable parts, much like stripping components from old mobile phones to reuse metals. It's all part of the bigger picture, building smarter, greener, and faster. So next time you board a 737, Remember the American grit behind it, thousands of hours condensed into days, keeping us all in the air.